Welcome back to Starship's fourth flight test. It has been an exciting day so far. The Polaris Dawn crew will attempt to reach the highest apogee ever flown by a spacecraft, and they'll also be performing a spacewalk or extravehicular activity wearing SpaceX's newly designed spacesuits. They'll also be testing space-based communications, which will be critical to future deep space missions. The Polaris Dawn mission is currently targeted to launch no earlier than July of this year, so stay tuned because that is going to be a very exciting mission to watch. In the meantime, at T minus 12 minutes, let's check back in with Dan on today's countdown. Hey, thanks, Jesse. Everything continues to go real smoothly. It's been a real quiet day so far. The board looks really clean, not tracking any impediments to a launch just under 12 minutes from now. Uh, prop loads continuing. Looking at the numbers real quick, we're about 85% full on the ship. We did pause to start filling those header tanks on ship. Again, those are the two smaller tanks in the very top of the nose cone that we're going to use for that attempted landing burn with ship. And with the booster, we're just at about 75, 76% or so uh, on our methane and locks, so getting pretty full there. Those are gonna continue down to about three minutes and 20 seconds before liftoff. That's when we'll close out all the prop in the ship and then T minus two minutes and 50 seconds on the booster. Uh, a lot of work also going on in the background, our range safety teams working to make sure uh, the area, not just around the pad, but in the sea space out on the Gulf and also in the anticipated entry point in the Indian Ocean are clear. We're not tracking any blockers, any boats, anything like that in the zone right now, uh, but their work literally continues right up until those last couple of minutes. Um, so they're working pretty hard to make sure everything stays clear. But right now the range is green. Uh, I already talked about it in the beginning. It looks a little bit cloudy, but weather not a concern today. Really light winds. We only had about a 5% chance of violation uh, when we started this morning and that's held. Um, so everything continuing to look really good for launch so far. Uh, the pad itself is getting ready reminder that we're going to light those engines about four minutes before it actually takes off so you'll see them start the 33 engines on super heavy start to light prior uh, to that two, t0 and then about two seconds after we'll start to see first motion but everything looking great just coming up on 10 minutes until launch getting excited down here ready to feel the rumble i'll send it back to you guys over in hawthorne thanks dan Teams are also getting excited here uh, at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. There is a pretty large crowd uh, <laughs> now gathering outside of Mission Control, uh, located just behind Jesse and I. Now, uh, oh, actually, you can see it there on your screen. There are. Uh, so, <laughs> <hey. Yeah. laughs> Everyone getting super pumped <laughs> for our fourth flight test. Uh, now, as a reminder on that note, today is just a test, the fourth of many future flight tests of Starship before it becomes fully operational. So whatever the outcome and however far we get, we can promise excitement. This rapid iterative development approach has been the basis for all of SpaceX's major innovative advancements, including Falcon, Dragon and Starlink. Today, we've successfully landed Falcon 9 boosters 316 times, changing humanity's understanding of what's possible when it comes to rocket reusability. And even though we are not recovering the booster or ship today, test flights like these provide critical data through every phase of flight, which will get us closer and closer to full reusability, and we have a lot more tests planned for this year. When we start recovering Starship boosters, we'll want them to return to the launch site for a quicker turnaround, which you can see in this animation on your screen. And that's when the tower reveals its dual purpose. After launch, the arms or chopsticks on the tower will help guide the booster into position to ensure a precision landing. And our goal for the near future is to have four launch towers two in Cape Canaveral in Florida, and they will look very similar to the ones that you see here in this animation. As we know, we find that our renderings tend to end up looking really similar to <laughs> real life. So yep. uh, while this is a, a rendering, uh, we do know it, it, we can look forward to this in the future. Like I said, we're gonna have two at Cape Canaveral in Florida and two located at Starbase. Starbase will continue to be used for flight tests and the towers at the Cape Will become will come online as we prepare to fly operational starship missions 
In fact, we recently upgraded the actuators and the chopsticks, which are responsible for swinging, uh, swinging those arms in for a catch. And we'll be testing an operational step uh, on this flight by moving the chopsticks to ca the catch position immediately after Starship flies away. That's going to be really incredible to see. As we mentioned, we have a lot more tests planned for this year, so we need a lot more hardware. Today, we have ships and super heavy boosters built and either ready to launch or in testing for the next several flights, with more coming off of the production line as SpaceX's Star Factory continues to grow. The latest phase of the factory currently under construction will come online this summer, giving us, uh, giving us several hundred thousand more square feet of space. Yeah, when you step into this factory, it is truly inspirational. My heart jumps out of my chest every time <laughs> I'm there. Now, this will enable us to increase our production rate significantly as we build toward our long-term goal of producing one ship per day. And coming off the production line soon, Starship version 2. Now, with all that being said, let's check back in with Dan for the latest as we head into the terminal count. Hey, thanks, Kate. Everything still looks great. We're getting ready to launch. We are just under six and a half minutes away. You can see when we throw up the graphics for prop load that we're almost closed out ship more than 90% full. Those header tanks are done. Uh, and then the boosters right coming up on 90% real soon. So we're going to see those close out in the next couple of minutes. Ship's going to end at about three minutes and 20 seconds. That'll be fully loaded. And then booster at about two minutes and 50 seconds. After all the props loaded on, we go through a lot of steps to safe ground systems. You're doing things called pushbacks where you're just clearing all of those lines on the ground of propellant before we lift off. But once we're done, we're going to have 10 million pounds of liquid propellant on board Starship to help power the most powerful vehicle ever designed. Uh, if we do hold, we have a built-in hold gate at T minus 40 seconds. We can hold there for about 30 minutes or so today. Uh, if we need to wait for final pressure checks or for any, if we have anything on the range, anything like that, uh, did just get that the range is green. So we are coming up five minutes and 20 seconds away. We are not planning to hold at T minus 40 unless we trip some kind of hold alarm, something like that. Um, so we could blow right through that gate and go right to launch. Don't be shocked if we hold at T40 though. And if we do, we can hold for a couple of minutes and then keep going. Our window is open all the way until 9 a.m. today. Now, once we pass through T minus 40 seconds, a number of events will occur in rapid succession. The ground spin and ignition systems will come up to flight pressure and the ship will go to internal power. Now, after that, the quick disconnect arm lockout is removed in preparation for retraction shortly after T0. Gas lines connected to the booster and ship are vented down. And once we pass T minus 40 seconds, we still have the ability to recycle the count under certain conditions back to T minus 40 seconds and hold there to assess what happened and if we can proceed again to T0. However, once the water for the deflector system begins flowing at T minus 10 seconds, any issue after that would be an automatic scrub for the day as teams would need to refill the deflector's water tanks uh, as well as the lock storage tanks uh, at the tank farm before making another attempt. So as Dan mentioned earlier, we are not planning to hold at the optional T minus 40 second mark. Um, that that moment basically uh, is what would allow teams to wait for final checkouts uh, uh, or assess prop levels or avionics, vehicle pressurization, um, uh, the range, the weather. Uh, weather is 95% go, as you can see from these incredible drone views that we have uh, and pad cams. It is a beautiful day. Uh, of course, my, you, we have some clouds building from, <laughs> from the locks there. Yeah, and again, a reminder that the payload for this mission is data, and our primary goal is to get ship through the extreme heat of reentry today. Uh, we're very excited to see that. We did get very close on flight three, so I'm excited to see how this iterate, these iterations that we've made to the vehicle will help improve our chances of success today. Yeah, absolutely. Now, just as a reminder for the booster, now we are not attempting to recover any hardware today, both either on ship or booster. For the booster, it, we will be attempting to perform a landing burn uh, to have a soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we made some improvements from our flight three learnings. 
So hopefully that will work and we'll see a successful uh, soft splashdown. For the ship, we're hoping to demonstrate controlled re-entry, including a flip maneuver and landing burn, and that will be followed by splashdown in the Indian Ocean. Uh, that is the same target as we had on Flight 3, so everything should look pretty similar uh, oh, in that regard. And we just heard the call out there that all prop load is closed out. So at this point, uh, there is like 10 million pounds of propellant on board Starship, which is incredible. It's getting very exciting. We are just about two minutes away from T0. And as Jesse just said, we are under two minutes away. So prop load is complete. All the fill drain lines into ship and booster have closed. Right now we're doing the pushback, so clearing out all those ground lines of propellant, and that'll be completed over the next couple of seconds. We're coming up on that T minus 40 mark. Again, not planning to hold. If we do, or if we get a hold after we pass it, we can snap back to that T minus 40, and then we can stay there for about 30 minutes or so if any other issues crop up. Once we pass T minus 40, a lot of things happen, both on the vehicle and the ground. You're doing, it's running a lot of its own self checkouts, venting different tanks and pressure lines throughout the vehicle. Uh, we essentially built that 40 seconds as that's about how much time it takes for the vehicle to take all of those actions, which is why we hold there. Uh, but all of Two that happens minute. automated. You do a final checkout of the TVC, the thrust vector control, how we're gonna steer. And then we see liftoff. So we're under a minute away. Forty-five seconds and counting. Good event game at. All right, now as we close in, we are past the forty-second mark. So let's listen in. Flight Ty director Ty Huntington is going to take us through one more time for a Starship liftoff. T minus 15. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. We have lift off. Vehicle is pitching down range. All right, 30 seconds into flight, the, the rumbles are still building the here in the Raptor's the nest. nest. We're seeing 32 out of 33 signal. engines lit on the Super Heavy right now. Coming up shortly is going to be Max Q, that maximum aerodynamic pressure as we go uphill on the vehicle. Max Q. All right, we just passed through Max Q, so we're going to continue on up. We still have about vehicle is a supersonic. minute and 30 seconds until we get to stage separation. Starship now flying faster than the speed of sound. All right, so you got a couple of views. You got some ground trackers in your top camera there. You're looking down from the top of the booster in the bottom left, and then a camera in the top flap of the ship looking back in the bottom right. So getting a couple of different looks as Starship heads uphill. Uh, once we get the hot staging, a lot of things happen all at once simultaneously. We're going to light the engines on the ship, starting with the RVAX first and then the three center sea level engines before we're separated. All of that exhaust gets plumed out the side of the hot stage and then the ship will separate itself. Uh, all but the three center engines Put on the, the booster are, gonna are going to shut down. So the booster never stops its thrust while we go through this hot stage maneuver. After that, the booster is going to do its flip, start heading back, and then the ship will be on its own power on its way to space. So that should be coming up in just about 30 seconds from now. 
As of right now, still looking in like 32 out of 33 Raptors lit on the booster. And we'll start to see those stagger down. They're gonna turn off and bank. So you'll see the lights on the bottom left screen of the engines that are active start to, to turn off in different groups. And you'll see those three center ones lit. Booster engine cut off. Ship ignition. Stage separation confirmed. Booth back burn start up. Acquisition is Houston. Houston. Hot stage confirmed. Ship under its own power. Booster boosting back. Looks like all 13 are lit. Kate, we got a booster on the way back to the Gulf and a ship on the way to space. Acquisition signal, Stennis. Ship chamber pressures are nominal. Ship power and telemetry nominal. All right, the first stage currently performing the boost back burn. This is expected to last a little over one minute. This propels the booster back toward the coast, taking it to a landing in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. As you can see on your screen in the bottom left-hand corner, uh, we were only using the 13 center engines uh, from from basically from from here on. Boost back burn shut down. Heard confirmation there of good boost back burn shut down. H2 tank pressures are normal. Lots of excitement. So right here, this is. This is our view of the jettisoned hot stage. Uh, as we mentioned, this is a temporary fix to help uh, reduce the weight of the booster. Uh, so we have the super heavy booster. Future iterations will have a lighter weight integrated hot stage structure that won't need to be jettisoned. Now, after we jettison that hot stage, this, the booster will begin to uh, uh, attempt its water landing in the Gulf. In the meantime, the ship will coast for about 40 minutes or so up to an altitude of 214 kilometers. And after its coast phase, it will attempt a controlled re-entry, including a flip maneuver and a landing burn just before splashing down in the Indian Ocean. But as a reminder, we are not attempting- trajectory nominal. Good news there. Trajectory is looking good for the ship, which is on the right-hand side of your screen. At this point in time, as you can see, um, we have no engines lit on the booster. It is coasting back toward uh, the Gulf of Mexico for a water landing and ship under power of all six Raptor engines. There's three uh, sea level and three vacuum Raptor engines uh, that are lit, as we can see on your screen. These views have been looking incredible. <laughs> Super Heavy has been performing beautifully today. And you can hear the crowd is very excited about it. As a reminder for Booster, the primary goal today is to do a landing burn and a splashdown in the water. And we are just about 30 seconds away from that landing burn expecting to begin. And an incredible view from the forward portion of the booster. This is basically on top of the Super Heavy Booster where we have jettisoned that hot stage. So now we can see this incredible view of Earth as it's making its way back down to the Gulf of Mexico. Right now, the booster is using the four hypersonic grid fins to guide itself through atmospheric re-entry. And we are expecting that landing burn here. And we will be we will be exciting, igniting 13 engines. And this is a great view on your left-hand side is a view, is three views from the booster and your right-hand side a view from the ship. And you can see those grid fins on your left-hand screen rotating and turning to guide the booster. And there's that landing burn. That landing burn just begun. And you can see the water below. And we have splashdown. Congratulations to the SpaceX team! Ship has entered terminal guidance. That was absolutely incredible. The Expected first successful signal. splashdown of the super heavy booster. 
love seeing it just tip over <laughs> into the water before losing that footage. Now the next milestone is coming up in about okay. under a minute. The ship is going to shut off its Raptor engines, ship engine cut off. which we see right there. As we mentioned uh, before, today's test flight is not an orbital flight, but rather one that demonstrates ship, the Starship's orbital capability. So right now we are under power with just the three center Raptor engines. Expecting those, to, and just there we can see that those have also successfully cut off. FDS is saved. What an incredible Nominal orbit insertion. <laughs> oh, there's great news there. The call out we were hoping to hear. Amazing views once again from Starship. We have our second Starship in space. These live views being brought to us by Starlink, which is on board the ship. Dan, what an incredible view we have once again. So exciting. We got another ship in space. I'm I'm like still jumping up and down. I like this whole building was going absolutely insane when we saw the the booster hit the water. I mean, wow! Uh, congrats to everybody that's just been putting in insane amounts of hours on everything to make this thing a reality. And I feel like every single time we do one of these, we're seeing something wildly new. We got to see the hot stage jettison uh, and the and the booster in the water, but. Just to recap real quick uh, over everything that's happened. So we lifted off uh, at 7.50 a.m. only nine minutes ago. How has it only been nine minutes? 7.50 a.m. Central at 12.50 UTC. We saw 32 of the 33 uh, Raptor engines on Super Heavy make the ascent. We had successful cutoff, successful hot staging. All six engines on the ship powered it all the way into a, a, a nominal orbital trajectory. Um, and we've already been getting some live views uh, from the ship on board. Uh, after that, the booster was able to do its boost back burn. Oh, this looks like we're actually getting some views from the ground still, uh, potentially from Florida, uh, of the of the ship as it's up there. Um, yeah, so that yeah, that's a view from some of our tracking cameras on the ground in Florida. Uh, but the ship, we just heard. Uh, successful orbital insertion, so it's right where it needs to be uh, and is now going to continue on its way to coast until it comes to re-entry. But I mean, the booster, successful boost back burn, jettison the hot stage, and then a landing burn. It looked like we saw 12 of the 13 engines light up and then that first ever soft splashdown in the water. So uh, a whole lot still to come. Ship now on its way to its primary objective of entry. That's going to be coming up. Uh, in just a, just under 40 minutes from now. So a lot still to come, but wow, what a nine minutes to start this mission off. So can't wait to see what entry is going to show us, uh, but that launch was incredible. Back over to you, Jesse and Kate. Wow. I am still trying to catch my breath here. <laughs> that has been... That was some incredible views that we have never seen before. It has been nonstop since liftoff. And with the booster having completed its job for the day, we're going to take a, a short break for about the next 28 minutes. And we'll return while the, uh, we're gonna take a break while the ship is continuing to coast before re-entry. <laughs> exactly. Uh, as with Flight 3, Starlink may enable us to talk with the ship through re-entry with no communication blackout. Welcome back to Starship's fourth flight test. It has been an exciting day so far. We had an on-time liftoff of 7.50 a.m. Central Time, followed by successful hot staging stage separation, jettisoning of the hot stage structure, an epic Boost, a super heavy booster landing, water landing in the Gulf of Mexico, the first successful return of the super heavy booster. So that was uh, incredible to see. And right now, uh, the ship is in space. As you can see here by this view, we're looking at uh, one of the flaps of Starship, one of four. You can actually see a close up side detail of some of those 
uh, hexagonal heat shield tiles. Now, coming up around T plus 49 minutes, the ship will re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. As a reminder, the primary goal of today's flight test is for a ship to make it through the extreme heat of re-entry. This is typically a portion of flight where we don't have communications with the spacecraft because it's re-entering at or around orbital velocity, which is about eight kilometers per second or roughly five miles per second. At those speeds, the spacecraft moving through the atmosphere results in friction and creates a plasma field around the vehicle. That blanket of plasma distorts, as you can see, uh, that plasma blanket, which you can kind of see here, distorts communication frequencies, so we're left with a brief blackout in communication. Hey, that's right, Kate. And Starlink's what's really allowing us to capture as much data as possible, especially through this re-entry. Updated animation landing burn. I hope we get to see it for real today. Uh, but these live views that we're getting now and we're going to continue to get are through Starlink. That's going to allow us to get as much data as possible, which we've said it before. We're going to say it 9,000 times. The data is the payload on these flights. So as much as we can learn, that's just going to pay dividends on all of our future flights and help us get uh, Starship to an operational phase. Reentry, obviously a really critical phase of the flight, uh, and it's the one that we're now most focused on cracking uh, to get us closer to that full reusability. Uh, Starlink is going to be able to send us data back all the way through re-entry and done some additional Part testing. And, uh, we're expecting to be able to get data from Starlink thanks to its high frequency and kind of the orientation and everything of Starship uh, all the way through re-entry. And then got a new view here. We have two external views. We had this one on flight three. We've got two for this one. Uh, and we're going to continue adding views as we continue to evolve Starship. Again, this is this is an experimental vehicle. Believe me, I want as many camera views as you all do. Um, so huge shout out to the AVI and the software teams and everybody that's been working with us. We're, we're getting more cameras on Starship, uh, not just because it looks cool, but this provides an incredible insight into reentry, which is, you know, historically a really tough window to look through. Uh, the physics of re-entry are insanely intense. Uh, one of my favorite NASA astronauts, Victor Glover, recently described it is with the forces and the flows and the temperatures. It's like pointing at a raging river in one spot and saying, tell me exactly what's happening right there. And like, that's what a ship is experiencing as it goes through, as it's moving through the atmosphere at, you know, more than five miles a second and heating up to thousands of degrees. So just having visual representation, just being able to see what's happening is incredibly valuable. Um, so these views are gonna be through Starlink. We've got this one. This is in one of the forward flaps looking back. So if you see it rotating around, that's because again, it's embedded in one of those forward flaps. So as we get through uh, and we start to build up density in the atmosphere, um, those, <laughs> Those, uh, those flat, this view is going to move around as the flap does. Um, and then the other one we had a little bit earlier is looking at one of the other forward flaps on the other side. Eventually, we're going to keep adding more cameras to Starship, uh, get a couple of different views from the outside of all the different areas, um, and then also eventually to be able to see payloads once they're deployed. So a lot more exciting stuff coming up in the future. But... Right now, we're, we're getting closer to re-entry. You know, we're going to be moving at hypersonic speeds of more than five times the speed of sound. We're going to see that plasma start to build. So, Kate, Jesse, excitement coming up. Yeah, as you can see with that view on your screen again, high def brought to us by Starlink. We can see the plasma beginning to build as the ship is getting closer to the Earth's atmosphere. Now, how, how, let's talk a little bit about how Star will survive reentry, hopefully, and control itself. Exactly. We've been talking about this, this entire flight test. There's 18,000 hexagonal ceramic tiles surrounding the bottom portion or the Earth-facing side of the ship. Starship 100 kilometers altitude. Good attitude for entry. Great call outs there. Now, during atmospheric re entry, the vehicle is going to see temperatures as high as 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit or over 1,400 degrees Celsius. So, those tiles are there to help protect the vehicle from this extreme heat. 
Yeah, and the flaps will help control it. Now, one noticeable difference I see immediately, um, those flaps are not moving as much as they were on flight three. So that is a great sign, right? We had uh, unplanned loss of uh, roll control on flight three. So we added some additional thrusters and we can see that uh, they're working well and we have a much stable, more stable view. So those flaps, there's four of them, two at the top and two at the bottom. Um, they're made out of stainless steel. And uh, yeah, they, they help steer, steer the ship, which as we can see, the plasma continuing to build. Uh, now, if the ship survives re-entry, <laughs> it will have to perform a flip maneuver uh, as well as a landing burn. We saw this demonstrated a in a couple of high altitude flight tests back in like 2020, 2021. Um, similarly- is increasing on the nose with unexpected ranges. Great news there. Uh, it sounds like the temperatures that we are getting during this point, which again, we usually don't get during spaceflight because of this plasma. We're getting this live. This is a great news. So similarly to, uh, for example, the, the serial number 10 test that we saw a couple years ago, we're hoping to duplicate that again today. Hopefully we will see it live. Um, and basically the three center engines of the ship will reignite um, and gimbal or point to help flip the ship until those engines are pointing down uh, so that it can land vertically using Raptor's thrust. And as you can see, even from the beginning of the program, we've designed Starship to land on Mars where there are no runways or other humans to help out. We also want rapid reusability, so we're doing- the Vehicle is passing through 85 kilometers altitude. The flaps have control of the vehicle. Great news, flaps have control of the vehicle. That's exactly what we want to hear for this flight test. Yeah. Um, again, we are going to be doing a propulsive landing instead of a more traditional means like parachutes. And we are expecting re-entry to begin here in just about a minute. Re-entry, an awesome view that we have here. This is, the, this is the same view that we had when we first uh, returned from the coast phase. Again, this is looking at the side of one of the flaps. And can, we, it's incredible that literally at the bottom of this picture, we're basically looking through plasma, <laughs> which is just absolutely mind-blowing. Wild, very wild. Now we are expecting Entry to begin here in about 30 seconds or so. Entry to splashdown is expected to last about six Expect minutes long. Mauritius. And that flip maneuver should occur around uh, about 10 minutes before splashdown. And such incredible views Starship that we're getting. Approaching peak heating region. And great call outs there. Yeah, these views are absolutely astounding. Most um, temperatures continue to rise with an expected reason. And in your bottom right hand corner, you can also follow along with the altitude of ship as it's returning back to Earth. So once again, this view is basically looking down into the plasma blanket that is building up around uh, the exterior of Starship. It is traveling, as you can see on your screen, you can look in the bottom right hand corner and see how fast it's going, how high it is, as well as the general orientation. Again, we're seeing a lot more stability, a lot more control here on this flight, which is great. It shows that the iterations, the Starship learning- is now an expected peak heating region. All right, great news there, telling us that this is basically the hottest point uh, that Starship should get. Uh, during its re-entry. Now the heat shield is working with the atmosphere for some like free braking, okay? <laughs> the, the atmosphere is helping to slow the Starship down. Yeah, exactly. We're not using any engines or thrust to slow the vehicle down. Exactly what Kate mentioned. We're just using the atmosphere and those heat shield tiles protecting the vehicle as it's coming through that high heat temperature. Yeah, now this is another one of those moments that we have been waiting for. Right now, the ship is currently re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, and by all looks and all call-outs that we're hearing on the net, it is doing pretty well. Now, we do not plan to recover the spacecraft today, but rapid and reusable, excuse me, rapid and reliable reusability is the ultimate goal. Just pausing to just take in this incredible new and different view that we're seeing. We did get a similar view in flight three, uh, but again, the vehicle did lose a little bit of its control, attitude control, um, and this is a very stable view. This is great. This is exactly what we want, and we are hearing that we're getting expected call-outs. Mm -hmm. Starship is seeing half a G of acceleration, remains on a good entry trajectory. 
You know, it's incredible to look at this photo and wonder, wait, is it real? Is it frozen? Um, <laughs> you know, we can see the, yeah, so I was just going to say we Those can- Those temperatures have stopped increasing. Oh, that is great news. Uh, the temperature is no longer building. Um, but I was saying like, we, we have a little bit of indication there. We can see that streaking occurring that occurs and tells us that this is this is indeed a, a a true view so once again we are looking basically through the plasma that is building up through or excuse me around the exterior of the ship and i still cannot get over that we are getting a live view of re-entry right now live on your screen again we've said this over and over but all thanks to starlink we are able to use Starlink in space, which we're getting this incredible data. And not only just the, the data from the sensors, but getting live imagery of what is actually happening, which is great, which we've never been able to do um, live before. Right. Now, just a quick um, uh, future outlook here. So in about, uh, uh, let's see, at T plus about one hour and two minutes, we should hear uh, a call out for entry transonic. That means that the ship is going near the speed of sound. And then about a minute after that, we'll hear another call out saying entry subsonic, meaning that the ship is going below the speed of sound. So these are all continued indications that uh, the atmosphere, right, as the ship comes back down, it is getting through the, the, the more dense part of the atmosphere and that atmosphere is helping to push against the vehicle and those heat shields are protecting the vehicle during this high heat period. Yeah, Kate and Jesse, we're, we're starting to see as the atmosphere gets denser, you're starting to see a few more particles make an appearance in the plasma there. You can see you're looking down at the aft end of the ship in the top left, and you're you're seeing essentially the flame build up as we go through re-entry. Um, you've been hearing the call-outs. The, they're tracking things like temperatures and the nose cone, and those uh, were right where we modeled them to be, which is really cool to see and to see in real time. Um, but we're coming up, we're at about 67 kilometers in altitude. Our last signal with the ship on flight three was at 65. So we should be making it past that point shortly. Obviously, as you guys pointed out, we're in a much better control this time as we re-entered in the right at attitude uh, and our flaps have been steering the way so far. Uh, once we get through transonic, that's when you've Start got essentially- Raptor landing bird different areas around the vehicle where the air is either moving faster or slower than the speed of sound will eventually get to uh, subsonic, which we have some experience with. We did in our suborbital campaign. Start of uh, and then Starship will eventually get down to its terminal velocity uh, as it's floating down uh, to the water. That's just about 200 miles an hour or so. Uh, we are hearing that we're starting to chill some of the engines as we are, if we make it all the way down to the water, still gonna attempt a landing burn, but still still a ways to go. We're at about 64 kilometers in altitude right now. We made it through what's expected to be the peak heating, but now we're gonna start encountering increased pressures as the atmosphere gets thicker and thicker. So we're at 63 kilometers, so we've already made it farther than we did on our last flight when that last signal was coming at 65 kilometers. So again, what, what we're really looking at here is the performance of the heat shield of the flaps, of the seals in the flaps. There's just a whole bunch of different areas that we're keeping a really close eye on as we re-enter. Starship remains on a good entry trajectory. And looking like we're still on a good trajectory. If you're seeing little camera moves, that's the flap moving as it continues to maintain uh, the attitude of the vehicle as it re-enters. And I mean, not just camera views, but we've got sensors inside the ship. We've got those sensors down at uh, the very aft end of the vehicle where we pointed out we had some intentionally missing tiles where we've got some sensors looking at just how hot it's getting around there. We intentionally put those in essentially the least critical part of the heat shield uh, where if, if you had any kind of a breach, it wouldn't be great for reusability, but wouldn't be critical for actual uh, making it through the re-entry and to the landing. 58 kilometers we're continuing to descend again right now we are we are over the indian ocean we're actually uh, getting closer and closer to that expected splashdown point which is just to the uh, off the northwest corner of australia 
And if you keep you keep an eye on our speed, the speed is dropping. We're we're hitting the thicker part of the atmosphere now. The speed's going to start dropping precipitously. We're going to start getting to to transonic pretty soon, and then after that, we'll get into subsonic, where we're we're moving less than the speed of sound. But wow, what a light show so far! External temperatures are starting to come down. Again, this camera view is looking right at one of the the forward flaps. And we're, we're strategically putting some cameras around the vehicle to just look at the, the different areas. Ooh, looks like we got the flap starting to come apart a little. Yeah, it does appear that we have a little bit of burn through there. We can see pieces of the vehicle flying off. What a show it has been. It's been like watching Interstellar or something. <laughs> This is wild to see this, but the ship is still coming down, which is incredible to see. How far can it go? That is the question. Keep your eye on the altitude in the bottom right-hand corner. We're at 54 kilometers right now. Now, ultimately, the data is the payload today. We've been saying it multiple times. We're the, you know, our teams are, are sitting, uh, reviewing this data live, learning where the hot spots are. As you can see, there's an obvious <laughs> hot spot there with the flap um, and learning how we can improve this design. The goal was to get as far through this high, uh, this high heat re-entry as possible. Ideally, we'd love to make it all the way down and perform <laughs> that, uh, that landing burn and flip maneuver, but we may not get that far today. We will see. Again, this is a test and we are gathering as much data as possible, visual data as well, which we can see here. We are getting a lot of debris covering the camera on your screen, but we can still see some of those sparks and flames from that high heat as ship is making its way back down to Earth. Ship now at 50 kilometers and closing. The good news is we still got, oh, looks like that camera lens just cracked. <laughs> It's safe to say ship's getting a little beat up, but that's to be expected on a test flight. We are still learning how to improve the ship for total survival and recovery of the high heat reentry. I'm honestly impressed that we're still getting this live view despite how much debris is coming off of this flap right now. <laughs> the fact that we've got it is good news. And I may, I may have jinxed it. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, it's back. We are still going. <laughs> and the teams here at SpaceX are excited, as you can tell by the cheering behind us. There's still a sizable crowd here at Mission Control Center, Hawthorne. A splashdown is expected in just about four minutes from now. And we're still moving. We still have live views. Starlink is doing an incredible job. Maximum entry dynamic pressure. External temperatures are dropping. Okay, good news. Those external pressures are dropping. The question is, how much is the ship is left? <laughs> <laughs> we can't really tell. We can still see uh, some of that particulate coming off. Um, and unfortunately, we do have a cracked camera lens. But for any photographers out there and uh, videographers, we know that's that's part of the gig sometimes. Yeah, and you can see that the speed is rapidly slowing down. That's actually really great news for us. We want the vehicle to be slowing down before it splashes down into the ocean. That'll help set us up for that flip maneuver, engines first down into the water. Exactly. So we have seen this flip maneuver demonstrated on previous high altitude flight tests like uh, serial number eight. Oh, more views. Uh, or excuse, I should say more light coming through the view that we have of, through that uh, cracked and, and dirty blends there. Um, but yeah, so we're hoping that this flip maneuver, that we can, we can pull it off um, as soon as we get those views back. If we can get them, uh, if the ship is still around, we will bring Vehicle it back to Vehicle has passed you. maximum dynamic pressure. That is great news. Maximum dynamic pressure being the moment in which the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of uh, aerodynamic pressure. Speed still dropping. We're now at 37 kilometers above the ocean. Just like flight three, we are targeting a spa uh, splashdown in the water in the Indian Ocean. 
And we don't have a live view right now, but because we're still getting data and telemetry, that does tell us that ship is still doing okay, at least. There, we got that live view back. <laughs> the crowd very excited to see that view, despite not being able to see very much. <laughs> the fact that it's there tells us the ship is still alive. Yes, and collecting now. data, continuing to collect data as we get closer and closer to Earth. Yes, now 30 kilometers, now 29 above the Starting Indian Ocean. 30 kilometers altitude, Mark 2. Sounds like the vehicle's traveling, uh, as we just heard, um, Mach 2, which is, uh, oh, looks like we might, uh, I, I thought maybe it might clear up. It is a little bit. Um, now at T plus one hour, three minutes and 13 seconds into Starship Flight 4, hoping that the ship can hang on. It's probably, <laughs> potentially hanging on by a couple of bolts and threads, uh, but it's still going and that is excellent news. That deceleration is looking incredible. We're about to go under a thousand kilometers per hour. Yeah. Starship and is at 20 kilometers altitude. Now keep in mind that even though we can't see anything, uh, the, the, pay, the, data, the data itself is what we really uh, are. Starship are, is subsonic. Subsonic, they're telling us it's traveling below the speed of sound. Movement means the flaps are actuating. I think we can see something. This is a nail biter, <laughs> but we are uh, unfortunately we can't see through the through the the, the lens. But we're still getting the feed. Uh, Starship is now uh, 11 kilometers over the ocean. All this data is incredibly important. Even if uh, you know it breaks up right now. Okay, we can see that flap actuating. Okay, the next milestone will be initiation of the flip maneuver and landing burn. Keep an eye on the bottom right corner of your screen for those three center engines to relight. They will gimbal or uh, angle so that the ship flips itself back up vertical and hopefully lands in a vertical position. And the crowd is very excited to get this view of that flap still maneuvering. Starship is passing through five kilometers altitude. This is incredible. We're getting very close to splashdown. These fireflies are such a good <laughs> sign of life right now. <laughs> we wish we could see more, but we'll take it. Starship is at two kilometers altitude, terminal block. Nimbing startup for Starship. All right, good news there. Nominal to look at it. Landing board startup. Starship is in landing board. Landing board shipping. The, the landing bird shutdown was commanded. Wow. I, I mean, <laughs> we, it was a little bit of use your imagination as you were going down with what we could actually see, but we were able to hear uh, the ship did its landing burn. It sounded Starship like we might have got down. two engines. And there's the final call for landing burn shutdown, but we'll, we'll go back through all the data, but we did get confirmation that a landing burn took place. Starship made it through re-entry uh, and did its first ever landing burn. From South Texas to the other side of the earth, Starship is in the water. Whew. What a day. What a day, guys! Yeah, um, that was that was absolutely incredible. 
Uh, we <laughs> we got views pretty much the whole way down. Analysis said it could do it. We weren't sure if it was going to be able to happen, but Starlink powered through, uh, and we were able to get signal. We started to get some debris on the cameras and everything, uh, but but we were able to see it. So, I mean, what a day! Uh, just recapping, everything started off today. We lifted off from here in Starbase uh, just about an hour ago. It feels like a lifetime. Uh, successful super heavy ascent boost back and its own splashdown in the Gulf. Ship made it to space, kept its attitude. Successful re-entry through peak heating. We got to see it under flap control through the atmosphere. And we got call out of our first ever ship landing burn after a launch into space. So, uh, just really incredible. Um, so I'm going to take some was, time to collect myself, but wow, was, that was incredible. I can't wait for the next one. Over to you guys. It was so loud here. I haven't heard the crowd get that loud probably since liftoff of flight one, honestly. <laughs> that was incredible. Congratulations to our teammates, to everyone who supported the Starship program. Thanks to all of our future customers for your support. And we'd also like to thank the people of Cameron County, Texas, as well as the Coast Guard, the Federal Aviation Administration, and the government of Mexico. And since Starship got a little bit toasty from that extreme heat of re-entry, and we've got our very own Starship right here, let's have a toast of our own. I've been waiting all morning for this. Okay, may I? <laughs> Light me up. Yeah. Just like Starship, I like this toasty. <laughs> I'm keeping this. <laughs> Uh, now, we've got more Starship uh, test flights coming to you soon. Be sure to follow the SpaceX account on X for more updates from today's test flight and future Starship tests. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.